I think Overwatch versus TF2 is like making dessert. Playing Overwatch is like you're baking a gourmet cake. There's six of you, you're in a kitchen together, and every chef has one specific cake ingredient that they're adding. The tank puts in the flour. Then the DPSs add the sugar and the eggs and the oil. Then the supports add the baking soda and the chocolate that brings it all together. All six chefs here must work in combination to nail this recipe. And if they do, this cake will be one of the best you've ever eaten. That's Overwatch. Team Fortress 2 is like eating a candy bar. Candy bars just taste great on their own. Like, you don't need any other foods to make a Snickers taste good. But okay, let's say you're eating a Snickers and then you see two other guys eating TF2 candy bars. And so you say to them, hey, let's team up. Let's merge our candy bars into one super dish. And they're like, yeah! So you throw in your Snickers and that guy throws in Dem MMs and he throws in a meta cookie and that guy adds Hershey's weapons guy and then... Well, then it just tastes like a big chocolatey mess. But here's the thing, a Snickers by itself tastes like a big chocolatey mess. So does Hershey's syrup. Combining candy bars together doesn't make them taste any better, it's still just a pile of delicious chocolate either way. That's TF2. So why are these games so different? Well, Overwatch characters are fundamentally designed to stay next to each other. If you want the protection from a tank's shield or to be healed by a support, you have to stand next to the tank or the support. It's just like the ingredients of a cake. They are designed to taste better when you mix them together. So if you're Junkrat, you're going to be more powerful by sticking with your team and utilizing their buffs. This is true of ultimates too. They are designed to be far more powerful when you coordinate them with your teammates. So ults primarily serve to reward teamwork. This is what makes Overwatch so satisfying because if your team works well together, your reward by becoming substantially more powerful, and it's a rush. So teamwork is what makes Overwatch fun, but these super powerful team synergies also mean you have very limited freedom to play this game your own way. You really can't be effective with a solo playstyle in Overwatch because by design, you are far less powerful without your teammates' buffs. This gets worse when the metagame has a clearly defined optimal composition like Dive. In this case, the synergies between specific characters are so strong that you are at a substantial disadvantage advantage if you play anything else. Hey, you guys want to make a red velvet cake today? I love making red velvet. What the fuck? No. Chocolate cake is the only dessert in the meta. I'm reporting you. The second big problem is that because teamwork is so crucial to winning, if you have just one or two bad teammates, that can ruin the entire game. Like if you were making a cake and your tank carefully adds the flour and then you perfectly add in sugar and then this dude's just eating Hans Oreos. Now the entire cake you were making is gonna taste awful because that guy is refusing to actually do his part of the recipe. And since you get random teammates game to game, it's totally hit or miss of actually having a team that coordinates well and has fun. It's like you're at a restaurant where half the meals cause horrible vomiting, but the other half it's like the best steak you've ever had. But people keep eating Overwatch because God damn dude, the rush when your team pulls it all off is just incomparable. Like every chef on the team just nailed their job and we made a cake so good it made Made Jeff Kaplan cry. In TF2, most characters aren't designed to benefit their teammates in any way. Soldier and Demo and Scout, etc. don't have any core moves that benefit their teammates, and so you can run off on your own without being any fundamentally weaker. And this means your effectiveness as a player is only dictated by you, not by your teammates' behaviors. TF2 characters are candy bars. They taste great on their own. They don't need anyone else's flavors. Engineer and Medic are the two obvious exceptions here. They are very much designed to benefit teammates and help you win, but winning the game just isn't really a priority in TF2. People don't really care about the objective itself, it just serves as the dedicated spot where everybody's gonna blow each other up. The game almost discourages you from trying too hard to win by frequently scrambling the teams. Or even if you and two other guys are like, hey, you wanna team up and defend the objective? Yeah, that sounds fun. Hey, 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 cut that out! Auto balance! So inevitably, the map is full of spies and pyros and snipers roaming around having whatever little adventures pop up and 90% of the time, you'll never properly coordinate with anyone. Don't get me wrong, teamwork is still really fun in TF2, but unlike Overwatch, it's not the entirety of the game. And instead, you have this incredible freedom to play in whatever style you want. Plus, TF2 maps are usually 12v12 or more, whereas Overwatch is only 6v6. This means that every individual Overwatch player has a larger impact on their team's product so there's more pressure for you to follow the recipe and not be a dick. There are, of course, exceptions to all of this. Teamwork in TF2 is definitely effective when it's done well, and the competitive modes like Sixes or Highlander are a great example of this, and there's definitely some Overwatch players who do find success by playing separately from their teams. But the underlying design of these games funnels players into a teamwork mentality or a solo mentality, so that 90% of the time in Overwatch, you need to stick to the recipe, and 90% of the time in TF2, you're in a Snickers dance party.
Outside of teamwork, I think the games mostly differ in how you can customize your experience. For example, customizing each character. In TF2, they treat each character like a fruit. And let's say you taste each one and then you go, man, I love apples. That's my favorite. I want to eat apples all day long. And TF2 goes, all right, well, I'm about to blow your fucking mind because we have different ways to eat apples. We got apple pie and apple sauce and baked apples and apple fritters and tons more. This is how TF2 classes work. There's only nine classes, but each one has three changeable weapon slots with hundreds of possible combinations. So if I love the taste of demo banana, I can mix it up and swap in Scottish resistance and now cover choke points. It's similar, but it's customized. Or now I swap in sword and boots and I'm playing demo banana night. And you're like, this is awesome. They took a food I loved, demo banana, and they're giving me different ways to cook that core flavor. Whereas Overwatch is like, you guys, we have 29 different fruits and veggies to choose from. And I'm like, oh my God, there are some really genuinely unique options here, like a McCree cumber or a Reaper Simmon or a Wrecking Bell Pepper. Hey, get out of here. But Overwatch doesn't give you multiple ways to cook each fruit. You're only allowed to eat them raw. So let's say you try them all out and you go, Widow Mango is my favorite fruit. I love this flavor. And you're having a great time eating Widow Mango, but you might say to Overwatch, hey, I love the flavor of Widow Mango. Could you give me some ways to customize my favorite fruit? And Overwatch says, here's a baguette. And you're like, that's cool, man. But I really like Widow Mango. Like I would love to eat that same flavor, but in different styles, like a new way to enjoy the food that I already like. And they're like, here's a durian. Overwatch doesn't let you customize your favorite characters. Instead, they just introduce new characters altogether. This is actually a really great thing if you're a player who wants a large variety in fundamental play styles. But it also means you might get tired of that hero that you really, really love a lot faster than you might otherwise. Even more broadly, TF2 lets the community customize the maps that you can play. When Valve released TF2, it's like they opened a restaurant and they said, hey, we made a bunch of food and here's our menu of dishes to choose from, but the kitchen's unlocked. Feel free to make whatever else you want. So everybody ran into the kitchen and went nuts. And over time, the community has cooked all sorts of insane new dishes for the TF2 menu. Like one dude went, you guys, I packed 10 scoops of ice cream into one bowl. I call it a 10X crit server. Ah! And another guy's like, I took soldier flour and pieces of toast and created jump maps. And you're like, what the fuck? That's actually delicious. And another dude's like, you guys, I took that sandwich and I made it really, really tall. And that's like a real thing that people play. It's called Higher Tower. It's just High Tower but the tower is really tall now. So over the years, people took TF2's map editor and custom servers and created crazy new genres like jump maps, Saxton Hail Mod, Randomizer, tons more. The community expanded TF2's restaurant menu to have almost infinite dishes to choose from, and this has drastically increased the game's longevity and enjoyment. But when Overwatch opened their restaurant, they said, here's our menu of food, you can eat these specific things. And over time, they've added new items to the menu like 3v3 or brawls. And these dishes all taste great, but the point is that over Overwatch, and only Overwatch, controls the entire menu. And as a result, it's a pretty limited menu. Like if you go in there and you try to order a 12v12 match, they will say, sorry, but 12v12 isn't on our menu. Why don't you try our 6v6? And I'm like, I have, man, and it's great, but I thought it'd be fun to make my own type of meal. And they're like, here's a durian. This isn't so much a flaw of Overwatch, it's just a big missed opportunity. They don't give the community tools to make unique maps and modes, and this unnecessarily limits the game's menu of options. And it's especially frustrating because Blizzard's older games did do this. Warcraft 3 is legendary because of custom maps. Blizzard made these incredible RTS ingredients and then said, hey, the kitchen door is unlocked, go make whatever you want. And so some frog started a 5v5 eating contest and literally invented Dota. And another dude invented Tower Defense and hero arenas and a million other iconic games. Warcraft 3 made the ingredients and the community made the menu. And it sucks when you see Overwatch's ingredients, which are so creative and cool, and you just like wonder what kind of amazing meals we might be eating if Overwatch just let us play with our food. At this point, I play more TF2, but it just depends on how I'm feeling, right? Like if it's the end of a long day and I wanna dick around, play my favorite character and not worry about teammates, then TF2 is the perfect experience for me. But Overwatch can be fucking awesome. The characters in Ultimate Ultimates are super creative, and if you have a great team, the feeling of working together and accomplishing a plan is one of the best feelings in gaming. Eating a gourmet cake is always going to taste better than eating a Snickers. It just really sucks if your cake has Hanzo in it. Hey, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribing to my channel is like getting free Snickers sent to your house, only the Snickers taste like a shitty video.